Jackson block in set two. That didn't work too well in set number two, so they've gone back to their original strategy. Haley Eckerman is now left front. And that, a very low pass, but Obagu saves it. So we have the same matchup that happened in the first set. Hampson at the net against Eckerman, Eckerman against Hampson very often. Coach Elliott referenced the passing for Texas. They actually passed a smidge better than BYU, but both under 50% for the match, and Texas was not good in that second set. Yeah, Texas particularly for, we call it a good pass percentage, and you want to be in the 60s. Texas was only about one-third of the time were they able to run the offense they wanted to run. BYU blue, Texas in a white. The winner to play either Stanford or Penn State in the final on Saturday, and it's a point for BYU as Texas cannot even get it across. If you're a Texas fan, that is not what I would call a reset there, a poor pass, scramble, and then not even able to get it over the net. That's not what Elliott wanted. That is what he wants, a good pass, a good swing, so Texas can run the offense. Collins sets the middle of the cage right at Parker. Here's Hampson over the top. So even when Texas does get a couple of good passes, they can't put it away. Which has got to be even more frustrating for Coach Elliott. But they had two good passes to run their offense on. Still, BYU comes up with it, and Hampson goes over the top yet again. At 6'7", add the leap to that over a net that's uh, just over 7 feet 4 inches, and she is a handful to get up and block. Wow, what a nice up by Hampson. I love the hustle there. That's not an easy play for anybody to make, let alone somebody six foot seven inches tall, hitting the ground, keeping it alive. Dalton is now on as the setter. She will serve. Hampson got it by the block. Point BYU. Hampson now with 13, make it 14 kills. Texas just cannot get a bead on that inside set. That ball's getting left inside, and they're over-traveling as blockers, and here's another poor pass and a free ball for BYU. Set outside to Eckerman. Nice. Uh, Parker is there defensively. Covered by Eckerman. Back set to Bell off the block and down. Getting back to the play of Jennifer Hampson, a basketball star at BYU. Redshirted last year so she could focus on hoops and now and ultimately got drafted by the LA Sparks, who are still very much interested in having her play professionally in Los Angeles. But she has committed herself to volleyball. She promised Coach Olmstead she'd be back this year to play. Here they are in the national semis, and she'll be in the U.S. national volleyball camp in January. And we asked her yesterday, she said, I honestly don't have an answer for you. I just want to play this season out and then start working towards some decisions. Is it basketball or volleyball? Right now, got to be thinking volleyball pretty hard with the way she's making the number two seed look like a very average team. Volleyball and basketball fans will, of course, recognize the name of Natalie Williams, who comes to mind when you think of Jennifer Hampson, Natalie was terrific professionally in both sports. Coach Robbins Purdy is trying to follow in her footsteps. The freshman making just her second career start here tonight. Wow, I can't believe the referee did not call a lift on that after the doubles on BYU. Good stuff there by Cat Bell. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, I did check in with the WNBA team, the LA Sparks. They do still hold the draft rights to Jennifer Hampson. And, you know, Magic Johnson has now taken over that leadership of that organization along with some other big money players. And so we'll have to see their desperate need of a center to go along with Candace Parker. Maybe they'll step up and pay Jim Hampson and make that decision even a little more difficult. Well, thank you, Holly. That's a nice problem to have. Right now, Texas is trying to give her a little bigger problem than she's had so far tonight as the Horns take the lead here in the third. Kat McCoy, the freshman out of South Lake. And that is the ace for the Longhorns. And this is a rotation that Texas 
can score some points, and just because Alexa Gray is not in the front court, especially on an ace like that, but they've got Hanson in the backcourt, forces the BYU timeout. Horns trying to get back in it. They're down a couple sets. Horns, Kurtz, Karai, Holly Rowe with you tonight from Chesapeake Energy Arena. Stanford and Penn State are on deck in the second semifinal. Headshot from number 15, Tamber Nobles point BYU. Well, that is an aggressive swing. I was not sure it was the smartest swing, but she found some space between Abagu's arms, off the head and out of bounds. Dalton sets up Abagu in the middle and just floats one across. And again, based on watching that warm-up, there's not a great connection between that setter Dalton and the quick hitters. If I were BYU, I'd be playing very shallow and looking for those... Uh, Miss connections, those off plays. But now BYU has Alexa Gray back on the court, so they have an option in front of the setter and Gray, and behind the setter with Hampson out of the back court. And both Eckerman and Bell are off right now for Texas. It's a Bagu adjusting in midair to clean that up. The sets are often low to the Texas middles, and they have no choice when it's set. At their armpit, all they can do is tap it over. BYU has opportunities, but they're not taking advantage. Gray goes cross court with it. Collins. Rito missed it. Five point Cougars. Amy Boswell back to serve. The nursing. Major with a 3.92. The NCAA's Elite 89 Awards winner, best GPA of the four teams that are here. Number 10 in blue, and she and her teammates earn another serve for her. And things weren't quite lined up. I like the adjustment by Gray to take some off the ball and again find that space that BYU's been finding in the middle of the Texas defense. the kill. Point BYU. Amy Boswell, by the way, certainly hopes as we take another look on the swing by Gray. Boswell hopes to stick around another day. She'll be practicing tomorrow for the championship as well as taking a final exam in gerontology towards that nursing degree if the Cougars do win this match. Eh, don't sweat there, right? The true definition of student-athletes on both sides of the net. She was starting to tell us about her path, pathological ph physiology class, so <laughs> I can't even say it, let alone take it. <laughs> Serve is error for Texas, and it's Robbins Hardy, the freshman from Honolulu. Played a game with the basketball team on November 29th, suited up for the basketball team in early December. And then started to commit all of her time to the volleyball team once the playoffs rolled around. That is the offense that Texas started with. We've seen almost none of it since. It starts with a good pass off the serve, but getting Obagu going is key for Texas. They need to figure out a way just to win one set in this match and let themselves know, convince themselves that they can beat BYU. You can also see BYU set that ball pretty tight, close to the net, so that Hampson could go right over the block. Robbins Hardy, by the way, could become just the fourth freshman in history to set a national championship. Holly's got more on her story. Fine. She's had a very busy time because she is balancing basketball and volleyball. She actually played in a volleyball match on November 25th, flew to Hawaii, made it at halftime to participate in that game. But the reason that doing that balance is, is actually the basketball staff that found her in recruiting. Jeff Jenkins and his staff found, found her first as a basketball player. They brought her to Sean Olmstead and said, hey, we think she might be good in both sports. Will you help us recruit her? And he said, um, I think I can help you with that. So she's actually on a basketball scholarship. So I feel like she's earning her way. Look at that schedule. Five states in about two weeks. She's busy. 
Back and forth she goes. She'll be back with the basketball team there. Next game is December 22nd. And now it's Eckerman. There's the dig from Robin Sardi. That's it. Hampson tried to roll it. McCoy is there. Here comes Texas. Eckerman with a big swing and the kill. The other thing you got to give Coach Olmstead credit for is that's a bold move to switch your five one set. It's like switching your quarterback, but not doing it until the third or fourth round of the playoffs. Robin Sardi didn't start till the regional finals, till their last match last Saturday night. And here she is starting. To a lead at BYU in a position tied at 13. Hampson starting to put up some monster numbers. 15 kills on 31 swings and just the four errors so far. They have had a hard time stopping her and now the ace from Tia Welling. Yeah, we were just showing the other setter. And here's yeah. that serve again. And how well she has handled the change. First one on to the celebration on Saturday. Dalton looking for Bell. Texas trying for something to stem the tide. They have fallen behind by a couple now. Time out. We will take the break with the BYU trying to close it out in three. Up at our second semifinal and some shock waves being sent through the crowd here with BYU in command. And Texas trying to extend it to a fourth. And changing up their offense a little, which they can do if they can control the, the serving of BYU. That time running a double quick. And hitting daylight for the kill. Eckerman with the jump serve. Parker with the pass. Hampson. That time a little too much on it. Remember, Eckerman came right out of the gate. Hit a tough one. An ace for BYU. I got to credit BYU's passing with controlling her very well. So that pass percentage that we're showing you right now is how often the team is passing well. There's a good pass. So how many of those can they get versus the poor ones? The higher the percentage, the more you're going to be able to run the offense you want to run. Texas, you saw both teams in the 40s. When you're doing a good job, you should be in the 60s. So both teams have a little trouble controlling the, the serving of their opponents. Texas getting a couple in a row. Robbins Hardy looking for Hampson with the triple block up. Texas had three waiting for him. Yeah, and Texas was ready. BYU running Hampson down the middle of the court. Good planning and preparation by Texas. They were not surprised by Hampson hitting in a different spot on the court. Service error ends three points in a row for Texas. And now Hampson will step behind the service line. Eckerman rotates out for Texas. Gray is also off the floor for BYU. That would be a poor pass. So now it leads to an easy play, a great opportunity for BYU. They get to run their offense wherever they'd like. Noble's through the block. Point BYU. So that last pass by Texas would have pulled their good pass percentage down lower in the 40s. Hampson, by the way, is a very good server at six foot seven. Look at how it just it's almost hitting down across the net. She hits that one out, but those are good service errors. They cross the net, and the team has to figure out: is it going in? Is it going out? The race is on to 25. Have to win by two. Texas needs this set to stay alive. Remember, Texas scored several points in this rotation because there's no Alexa Gray on the court for BYU. Big opportunity for Texas here. Nobles with the tip covered by Dalton. The set outside to Bell. Off the block. Popped up by Nobles. Bump set right back to her. Good D in the back from Texas. Now Neal with a swing. That set back. Bell. Lights up. Parker there defensively. Free ball horns. Obago in the middle with the tip. Point Texas. That has worked for her all night.
Wow, what an up. Some great defense by both teams, but the finish there, remember, lots of times Texas was not connecting or purposefully dropping the short off-speed attack. Robbins Hardy trying something different on offense. Remember, this is the exact rotation that BYU had trouble in the last time they were in it. Texas scored three. And now it's Texas with some momentum. They are up three in a timeout BYU. That was in the Sydney Olympics where the team got a, a strong fourth, lost in the bronze medal match. She wasn't able to play with an ineligibility thing, but then the next year she made that transition. But she was a great indoor player also. And now... The referee again making a mishandled call, a lift. I think she's been a little biased against the BYU team ever since Jarrett gave, gave her the stink eye. <laughs> Coach Elliott gave her the stink eye late in the first. Thompson sent right back by Texas, and now it's Norbert's rejected. And the burnt orange making some noise. This is exactly what Penn's, uh, what Texas needs is the fact that they've got to get hands across the net, got to get take advantage of the fact that Alexa Gray is not on the court right now for BYU. As soon as BYU can win a point, Gray comes back in. She'll come. Her position comes to the front row. But BYU cannot get a pass to run their offense. Amy Neal gets the kill, and Texas two points away from the set. You can see BYU so interested in the quick attack because Texas has established it that Neal gets left zero blockers on her. Easy put away. Boswell tried the tip, denied. A swing from Cozy Burnett, who was on here late in the set for BYU. Here she goes again. Interesting that the Cougars look to someone who hadn't played through the first two sets, and now it's set point Texas. Yeah, I think BYU is just trying to calm down some of their players, including Tamber Nobles, who came out, and get them ready for set number four. But well, we've got ourselves a match now that Texas, I think, is going to finish this out. Stick wide and the Longhorns take the set. 